So before we uh, talk about how to paint horses, there's an important first step. If you haven't done it yet, go on Google or YouTube and research uh, photos of real horses to understand what they look like. Um, before I did this, if I wanted to go paint a horse, I'd paint it like all brown and maybe paint the tail and the mane a different color. But in reality, horses have a lot of color variety. Uh, for example, here we have an all brown horse with then got black on the legs and then a little white on at least one fetlock, maybe on the back there as well, and then white uh, along the nose. And then we have uh, here we have a photo that doesn't lead to the right one. Hang on, there we go. Um, maybe another a brown horse here, much more shaggy with a different white color around the fetlocks and his the mane is a different color so you have a, quite a bit of variety when it comes to the horse colors it's not just all one color horse even if it's brown there's brown and there's a little bit of black around the mouth there and there's white on the nose and white on the fetlocks and it, it, it varies and very rarely do you see a horse that is actually all just one color um, if they are it tends to be a black horse which again, just because it's black doesn't mean it's all going to be one color. You'll find black horses with some variety. In fact, if I could find the photo which stood out to me, and of course I can't find it now. I'll find it in a second, but there's a, uh, found a picture of a black horse with a white mane and tail. Um, but that other previous brown horse had black uh, tail and mane. This one has a white one slightly different colors on the fetlocks and the whole reason for this is um, if you can add these variations to your horse as you're painting it it adds a lot of uh, realism to the painting and so just go through Google or what have you check out photos of horses find a nice color scheme that you like and try to copy it because um, those small details really add to the final results. It looks a lot more realistic and a lot better than if you're just painting painting your horse all one color. So yeah, do a little research. Uh, you can learn a lot about horses. Uh, before I did this I did not know that uh, I thought chestnut was just the color of horse. It actually refers to a breed and there's a lot of other things that you'll learn. And there's quite a variety of horses that you'll see like this shaggy horse right here. Okay, now let's get on to the painting. So step number one in painting our horse is to start with our shade color. In this case I'm painting a uh, roughly blonde color horse so I'm starting with some Vallejo model color English uniform. And you don't want your shade color to be too uh, dark because as I've talked about before contrast it's really important in painting. Um, however, on a horse, it's not really rippling with muscles. Uh, horses are more sleek. If you're painting like a, a real ripped uh, barbarian, yeah, you can put a lot of contrast in the muscles for definition. Uh, but for horses, you don't want ripped horses. It looks very, very creepy. So uh, you want to tone back the contrast just a little bit. So as I said, English uniform going all over the horse to cover up our primer. Uh, doing this in two coats and also covering up the uh, the tail and the mane just because I have the color out and they're going to be painted a lighter color anyway so saving a step and uh, lightening those areas up while I'm uh, painting the rest of the horse. So here's where things get a little bit tricky. Uh, a lot of people have problems painting horses because they're so smooth and round and painting smooth large round or flat areas is uh, very difficult because you can't really wash them you can't dry brush them you need to layer them and it takes a lot of very thin layers and what I'm using here is a method that I've uh, adapted from uh, larger scale figures and that is uh, painting the hair texture of the horse onto the figure using uh, very thick paint so uh, what I have here is Vallejo model color gold brown and it's virtually straight out of the bottle. The brush is just dampened slightly. You don't want to thin it too much because uh, you need to have control of the paint. And I'm just going down in an up and down motion to try to recreate the hair of the horse. 
So again, if you went and looked at your horse photos, hopefully you have an idea of what direction the hair goes on a horse so you can, uh, well, I don't want to say easily recreate it, but uh, roughly get it, the hair going in the proper direction. Usually, you know, it's kind of parts, like the part on the top of your head. So uh, starting from the top of the horse in the center, hair mainly goes straight down. Um, you do want to sort of uh, contour it around the muscles, have it going back direction slightly at a slight angle. Uh, the area around the uh, the neck would be a bit more uh, painted forward as you'll see a little bit later on. But this is going virtually everywhere. I am not painting it inside any areas where I want uh, shade. So if you see it's kind of going just on top of the legs, not in the areas uh, in between where the leg meets the stomach, areas where there should be a, a bit of shadow. And uh, as I said, I've modified this from uh, larger scale figures where this technique works a lot better uh, because it's a larger scale. Uh, to do this realistically on this scale, you would need an extremely fine brush. However, uh, the modified version you'll see coming up in just a second. So now the texture's all done, it's, the horse is looking a bit stark, so we need to soften this look. And we're going to do that by taking our same golden brown color again. This time it's thinned. It's thinned quite a bit. And we're layering it on over the hair. And so this is going to soften the, uh, the look without covering it up entirely. And this is going to go over about um, three to four times, depending on just where I think it needs it and how I think it needs it. And the areas where it was kind of hard to paint the hair texture, like around the legs, a uh, bit more concentrate in those areas to bring those up to the proper uh, base coat color. And some of the uh, shadow areas that I think need a, a bit of work, also adding this into uh, in those areas. So because of the golden brown that's already on the texture areas, if we apply this transparent color over th those areas at the same time as the shadow areas that d do not have the textured golden brown, uh, the, the areas that do, of course, will be naturally lighter because they have a lighter color underneath them, if that makes sense, I hope. And here we are towards the end of this process. Uh, after about three or four layers, um, the hair texture is looking much less stark, uh, but it is still showing through. Obviously you don't want to cover up the entire effect that we're trying to achieve here. We're just looking to uh, soften it. And once this is uh, done to a uh, satisfying level, we can move on to the highlights. So we're going to highlight twice, uh, each time by mixing a little bit more uh, model color beige into the golden brown color that we used previously. And this uh, layer is uh, thinned a bit more than the, uh, the base coat or the first golden brown layer. Um, but it's still not thin to the same level you would if we were doing just a standard uh, transparent uh, layering technique. And again, recreating the, uh, the hair texture. This time only going on areas where we would expect uh, the horse to have a bit of highlights. So on the, the tops of the muscles, around the, the rump area here, uh, just trying to define the muscles where we can, adding a bit more highlights of the horse and the, uh, excuse me, the legs of the horse and around the stomach area. And this, this will really help define the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the muscles, especially uh, around the, the front, the front legs of the area and the chest, which uh, right now is a bit, uh, bit hard to pick out. And now repeating the process again, uh, once again, once again, mixing in a bit more beige to the previous mix and applying this uh, just to the, the areas where the highlights are really going to hit. Again, re-emphasizing the areas that have already been highlighted just in a smaller area. So once again, tip tops of the muscles around the flank, uh, around the legs, a little bit around the uh, top of the rump area and just repeating the uh, process essentially, just in a smaller area. 
Now I did mention uh, if you wish you uh, after each of these layers you can go back with the transparent layer to soften the look if you want. Uh, I haven't found the need to do that yet but depending on what colors you use and how your results are uh, you can do that if you wish. Um, if, you're, if your figure is looking a bit too, uh, the hair texture is looking a bit too stark you can go ahead and do that. However, uh, I was satisfied with what I had so I didn't bother. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, horses are almost never a single color. There is some color variation on, variation on horses. So what I'm doing now is adding some uh, white to the leg and fetlock areas. And uh, fetlock is sort of like the ankle of the horse. Um, starting off with some Vallejo game color bone. And this is very thin because uh, at this point I'm just kind of seeing exactly where I want to apply the, uh, the white eventually. And so keeping it thin so I can just kind of work my way up the leg until I'm happy with where the white is going to be placed. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll go back over it with a uh, thicker uh, layer of bone to, read it, to emphasize the area. And then finally mix in a bit of white to bring it up to the, the white color that, I'm, uh, that I want. Now moving on to the tail and the mane, decided to paint these uh, not quite white but uh, more of a, uh, a light straw color, at least lighter than the horse. And using a um, mix that I probably should have written down, it was model color Iraqi sand and um, beige. I believe that was it, yes. So this is very simple, just going over the um, the mane and the tail. Had to do this in two coats, it didn't quite cover in the first one. And then uh, going back by uh, adding highlights, by adding some white to the mixture and doing uh, about two layers of highlights, I believe. And here we are highlighting the tail and the mane. As I said, just adding a bit of white to the previous mixture and going around uh, the edges fairly uh, simple stuff at this point. Off camera I did go back and add a sepia wash to the uh, the tail and the mane because I thought I needed a bit more contrast. However, at this point we're uh, moving on to the hooves. Now, um, hooves are actually varying color just like the horse. They can be fairly dark near black or they can be more uh, color similar to bone, a little bit darker. But again, uh, do those research, uh, look at those research photos and uh, figure out what uh, color you want. I thought that um, if the fetlock was white, the hoof tends to be a lighter color, which I see some evidence of that, but doesn't seem to be 100% accurate. Um, so you, you have some variety on how you want to paint hooves. Uh, I'm painting these hooves in an up and down textured motion just like I did on the hair. Actually I do not think this is uh, realistically correct. However since I did all the hair, uh, the texture for the hair, I wanted to keep that uh, going with the hooves. And also painting up and down means that you can leave some of the area, um, the color from the horse, in case, in this case the white fetlock, kind of seeping down onto the hoof area which adds a touch of realism. So the colors I'm using for the hoofs here are uh, Panzer Aces Dark Mud um, and then using a bit of khaki, I believe, and then mixing some bone into that. And um, the other thing about hooves, hooves are roughly, I be best can describe them as hollow. So if you have, if you can see the underside of the hoof, you want to paint that uh, a circle inside of it, paint it black or a dark brown at least. Also if you need to paint um, horseshoes onto a horse, this particular horse does not have one. 
Uh, however, if you want to paint them realistically, please do not paint them steel color. Horseshoes were made out of iron. They are, you can paint them basically a very dark gray if you want to be uh, accurate or, or at least realistic. You can mix in maybe, or take a gunmetal color and mix a heck of a lot of black paint in with it. But please do not paint them silver because it looks ridiculous and horrible. Uh, unless, of course, that fits into your paint scheme. I have painted horse hooves gold before because I wanted to carry uh, the color scheme of the rider onto the horse. But uh, yeah, if you're going for realism, please, very dark, very black, or very dark gray uh, horseshoes. When it comes to painting a horse's eyes, you could paint the entire area black and it would be completely accurate because you really can't see the whites of a horse's eyes unless they're very, uh, they're frightened or something. Um, so if you, you can hand paint them all black, however, that looks a bit creepy, I find. So um, paint the eyes black and then just in the rear corners, uh, once that's dry, paint just a tiny spot of white. So it makes them look uh, fairly accurate. As I said, you can see the white of an eye of a horse when it is uh, when it is frightened or something's happening, uh, which could be accurate for a war setting. Um, however, just don't paint them like human eyes because they'll look really, really creepy. So one of the last areas to paint is around the uh, mouth and the nose area of the horse. Now again, as through my research I learned something. Um, for the most part it seems that if there is, the horses tend to be black around this area, however if there's any white like from the top of the uh, the head that goes down to the nose, wherever that white touches it tends to be pink around that, uh, around those areas. So uh, you could actually have a mix of black around the mouth and then pink, uh, just a little bit of pink if the white stripe goes down far enough. Far enough. Um, in this particular figure, I decided to paint the uh, the whole area pink because I do have quite a bit of uh, white around the uh, around the muzzle. And when I say pink, actually, I'm talking about a flesh color. Uh, in this case, I am using um, the same colors I use for human flesh, which is Panzer Ace, Ace's uh, medium flesh tone mixed with a bit of the highlight flesh tone, and that's uh, applied thinly around the mouth area. And at this point, I'm just going back with some white and bone to clean up the area uh, around the uh, the snout. And so that's pretty much done. Just a couple washes here and there, like in the nose area around the mouth to clean it up. And uh, we can call this figure done. And there we go. We got three horses all done going backwards on the merry-go-round. Um, we can see the blonde horse here. Uh, these are not completely painted yet because I'm still painting the riders and I don't know exactly um, what colors I want to use on those yet. So the saddles and the reins have not been painted yet as well. They haven't been varnished so you can see some scratches around the uh, the belly of the horse where the riders go. So we have three horses, three different colors here. You can see the hair texture on the blonde horse is much more pronounced than the other two. Um, as I said, I've just adapted this from larger scale figure figures, and so I'm still kind of playing around with the technique to see which one, uh, how much texture to use, and which one looks best. So, but I do like that it's adding texture to an otherwise very smooth, plain model. And even though it's not in scale accurate, I just like it because it makes it the horse a bit more interesting. And I hope that you find this an easier painting method than if you were to use just uh, layering because I know layering is hard to to learn but uh, that's it uh, hope this helps thanks for watching